Hi everyone, today we're going to start talking about disease. But in order to be able to do that, we need to first think about microorganisms, or microbes for short. Um, so let's go through the overview of what we're going to learn about today. So we're going to talk about how we define microorganisms, or microbes, and then start to think about the concept of what we call a pathogen. Pathogens, infection and disease, so linking microbes with the concept of disease. And then looking at what we call the types of pathogens, so bacteria, fungi, viruses and parasites. Okay, so we're going to start by thinking about what microorganisms are. Okay, so you can see some examples of microorganisms here, shown in that photo on the left. The idea is that microorganisms or microbes are only visible when using a microscope. So if you need a microscope to be able to see them, it's a microorganism. Most of them are what we say is unicellular or one cell. Um, some can be, you know, small multicellular organisms, but that's what most would be. And so microbes is the, the shorthand kind of abbreviation that we tend to use, and I will tend to use through this presentation. So now let's think about it in terms of the context of disease. So we introduce the word pathogen. So a pathogen is a microorganism that has the potential to cause disease once it's inside your body. So the potential to cause disease, it doesn't mean that it necessarily will, um, that depends on the pathogen, depends on exactly what organism we're talking about, but that it has that potential. So typically we're thinking microorganisms, although later in this we will talk through some, um, some parasites, which are multicellular organisms that can cause disease. So it has to invade the body. So what, through what we call the portal of entry, or that's the, the place that the, the pathogen, that microbe, can enter your body. Uh, breaks through the body's defences, through the bar body's barriers, to get inside. And so we call this process infection. So where the pathogen comes into your body and then it starts to invade and multiply and move throughout your system. It might stay in one particular spot or it might spread through your bloodstream to every area of your body. It just depends on the pathogen. And so then we get to this concept of what we call disease. So the idea is that disease, well, we define disease in terms of once it starts to have a negative impact on your body's systems, that that is disease. We will go through the concept of disease in another video. Uh, we're starting to think about it in terms of things that infect your body versus things that don't, like um, cancer or smoking. Um, that, uh, yeah, but so disease is, is where we actually have these negative health effects. Um, so if the pathogen invades your body and multiplies but causes you no harm whatsoever, um, then, you know, it's not causing disease. So that's why we say that it's the potential to cause disease. All right, so let's go through some of the different types of pathogens and we'll give you some examples as well. So we talk about bacteria. So you can see so some electron microscope images of different types of bacteria. Our scientists will cultivate bacteria on agar plates that help them to grow and to be seen in their colonies. Each of these dots represents a colony of bacteria. And then a little diagram to show you an example of a bacterium, which is the singular version of the word. Okay, so they're very simple cells with some different features you don't see in other animal cells. But they're all unicellular. So they're just made up of a single cell, a simple cell. Um, you can see inside here that it's just got a little chromosome of the, so that it, it has no nucleus, um, no nucleus inside its, its structure. So its DNA, its chromosomes are just a loose little coil inside. It's got uh, what we call a flagellum, which is Latin for whip. It's this whip-like tail, which is how the bacterium is able to actually move around from place to place, and it kind of absorbs its nutrients through the outside of the cell. So some examples of um, pathogens that are bacteria, we've got anthrax, Bacillus anthracis, um, Staphylococcus aureus, also known as golden staph, which can be particularly nasty if you've gone into hospital, um, because it exists on um, most people's skin, and, um, and so it, it can happen if you get a wound, um, or you know, where that kind of opens up your body's defences that way. And also E. coli, one of the main reasons you wash your hands after you go to the toilet. Um, other than bacteria, we also have fungi. Um, so we've got some examples of a mould here, and then this is actually a good fungus. This is um, baker's yeast, um, so that we can use to actually make beer and bread and things. Um, so they can be unicellular, or we also have multicellular organisms. So fungi, you know, things like mushrooms are in the fungi family, um, but they're not the ones that we're typically thinking of as pathogens. Uh, they reproduce by the production of spores, which then get released. So it's kind of their version of seeds. So they're different from bacteria. Um, so we get the, the fungi cause um, athlete's foot and also thrush, which is a similar one. And then also ringworm is a fungi-related um, disease. 
we also then have viruses. Now, viruses are very different because in biological terms, they're actually non-living. They don't have enough of their own components in order to be able to, to survive, thinking about the things that living things do. They cannot reproduce. The way that they reproduce, though, is they, for, they invade a host cell and then force the host to make copies, more copies of the virus. So they turn it into a virus factory. So some examples that we come across, so influenza, the flu, uh, the Ebola, and also HIV, which can cause AIDS. Um, they're all examples of um, viruses or other things like measles as well. Then we get to um, so then we get to to parasites, which um, are multicellular organisms. In this one, in this e these examples, so we're thinking about uh, this is a tapeworm, and this one's called a guinea worm. Uh, so they that's they, they tend to be the sorts of worms tend to be the sort of ones that we're thinking of. That they that we define them as something that invades a host and then it feeds off or it benefits in a way that the other organism is harmed. Now, the other organism may not know that they're being harmed, that sometimes that these worms can live inside our gut for, for a very long time and that we may not be actively aware that they are there, but they are still having a negative effect on our body. So tapeworm and guinea worm being two classic examples. Okay, and so thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.